Hello guys, hello guys, hello guys and welcome to another one of my Fortnite videos I dug into the previous stream for Challenge the Horde and while that stuff is running I wanted to go a little bit through what type of an event this year is. You're gonna be defending four bases with three other players, these are your pre-built bases and to like kickstart things let's see what like the development team had to say about that process. I think one of the things we wanted to experiment with was to give people like a more discreet prep phase so they can build and they can take as much time as you want. And in this social building area, you're actually match made with other people, even if you're not really uh, grouping with them. So you can, you're exposed to everybody's building things and some of the stuff that Billy was already talking about. Um, but then once you have that building done, you can, you just save it and then you're loaded in the next time you want to do the challenge. You just sh show up and then you can basically play on demand. We want to get that instant action feeling for this kind of event where like you can go in and just say hey I'm gonna throw the switch and I want to shoot some guys in the face and go. So basically we have a bit of a building game mode where the only thing that you do is to build your base. So you go in there you get some resources based on a skill tree we're gonna be looking into that and you build and maintain your base and you do that with up to three others but these are not players you are necessarily gonna be playing with. It's just like an open map where you build your base and you can check out how others are building things as well. You're gonna have super limited amounts of resources, we're gonna be digging a lot more into that, but just for reference this here is a little bit of how your like resource stash might look when you are like mid on it anyway at the start. So in addition to the resources you can see here, you're gonna be having some actual building materials, wood, metal, stone, depending on what you have selected in the skill tree. And you're gonna have a very very small area to build a base that you can expand further with skill points as you move forward let's hear a little bit about what the devs had to say about that the area where you're going to be allowed to build in to start and as you're filling in the skill tree in addition to the resources one of the things that you actually gain is the ability to make your base larger and you can expand that size over and over so you start with a little a little teeny square you know and you're like oh this is my little shack and then as you get through the skill tree you can eventually have like a huge castle that you fill in and you know other people who might be building may not be as far along in that skill tree so they can be jealous of your mighty castle right, right? of course with, with their little shack you got to show off that's that's at least a whole, half of this, right? Yeah, right. I mean, you, gotta <laughs> you gotta show up those sweet building skills That's and right. uh, the optimal, those optimal for The way we had it in the first time around was with a pin for a new map area on the globe. And while in that area, we had new specific areas matching up with different difficulty tiers, different power levels that you had to unlock sequentially in order to move forward. This time around, that is supposed to have been changed so that you can access high level areas from the start if you are in a high level main campaign game. Whereas even at power level 100, you would have had to complete the power level 5 challenge the Horde mission the last time. That's not going to be needed this time around, but let's hear what they have to say about the map. Uh, and so that's that's in the map with this awesome, awesome three headed skull thing right. you know, that, the, that the artist came up with. Uh, one of the things that you'll see here is I've unlocked all the different zones, but these unlock sequentially. So, so you start here at uh, power level five, and you have to complete the challenges correctly in order to get all the way uh, yep. all, all the way through each one. Um, and as you can see here, I've, I've I've unlocked all the way through. I haven't I didn't actually play all these challenges though. So the next thing that we're going to be looking into is super super important. If you noticed on the map, you would see that some of these different maps would give you skill points, and these skill points are insanely important because everything that you do in Challenge the Horde is based on the resources that you get when playing based on your skill tree. So it's not just about how large a base can you make, it's also about what type of resources are you going to be getting while you're playing. Different power level of maps would give you different types of these skill points. So completing the low tier maps would give you low tier skill points that would unlock low tier resources and high tier maps would give you high tier resources that you could use to make high tier weapons. So if you only played in a low tier map and you went into a high tier map after that, you wouldn't be getting the resources that you needed to make the high power level weapons and traps. So it was very important to make sure that you earned all of these skill points for the appropriate maps. Let's hear what the devs have to say about that. Like what the <laughs> heck? Yeah, what we did is we added another skill tree in here. The way we did that is by shrinking <laughs> the other tiles and just plopping one in. Uh, so, uh, but what you will see here is look at this beautiful art. Oh yeah, I mean this thing looks hot. Nice. That is like, nice. Like, you, like there's greens <laughs> and purples and it is, 
it is fantastic. And so on top, like icons have like colors in them now. Uh, in fact, we go back to the other, I noticed that we also did that in the other rest of the skill tree as well. I was actually super excited when I saw that. Yeah, yeah we're um, evolving. Come yeah, on. So, so just at a glance, being able to kind of see what yeah. I'm going to get out of the thing is definitely, definitely more helpful because I know it can be kind of daunting. You come in on a skill tree and you're like, all right, where do I go from here? Where am I going to yeah, start? We, you know, we, we are super truthful when we told people we're yeah. in the mi middle of working on this thing and we're like, hey, it's not as good as thing, but every, every and, you'll, and, you, and you'll see, and that's like, that's why we like, we always encourage like getting out there and talking to us, like even in stream today, like be, make sure you're, you have any questions or things like I'll be running in chat and, uh, and the closer and closer we get to the end of this and like getting some of your questions out of there. But if you're curious about things or have areas that you think you can improve, use that, you know, we have that in-game feedback tool. Let us know because we do make those improvements because we see things like we, you know, we run those UX tests and see that things aren't working for people or people aren't, things aren't reading correctly clearly uh that yep. we can go in uh, adjust those things if need be and then the, the other i guess i was gonna say the other tip here too is in generally the way it's split up are the things above like the the, the split on the top are more resources and advancements to the building phase we're like nice. hey i'm gonna get more things to build pre-build because that's where i care about the stuff at the bottom is more oh, when i'm in the combat awesome. zone nice. i, I want to favor that instead so you can kind of pick which one you care more about as you're working oh. through the skill tree Man, that does it. That is actually a good tip of trick. So right yeah. there, because I, I, I wasn't even I, I was not paying complete attention when I <laughs> when I did mine. Uh, Upon entering a map to actually play Challenge the Horde, everybody made their base, you were going in there to play with others, to have fun. You would load into a small lobby like you're inside the storm and you would have this computer interface where you would go in and select the power level of the current mission. So we had different challenge tiers for every power level. And you kind of had to select one of those in order to kickstart the game. Then a random player's base would be selected and people would go there to make sure that it was as well up and running as possible because if one base falls, everybody loses the game and everybody gets new resources every time. So it was really about like every player would go all in everywhere all the time. Very, very amazing. Let's hear a little bit about that stuff. Uh, nope. So now lines. we're switching bases uh, from the from one of the starting bases. Whose base is this, uh, Zach? Let's see. It's Hayes, Ooh, Hayes's? Hayes's. Okay, Hayes's, Hayes's think, base. Yeah. So what happens is is that the the waves shift focus to the different players. So each of the bases are are tested in in sort of pseudo sequential order. And uh, and so now since they just defended uh, wave one against one aspect of the base, they're now moving to one of the other players' thing. The different defense waves were not just for different players' bases, they were also very different in what you could get in terms of modifiers, types of opponents, all sorts of really, really crazy stuff. And they went a little bit all in on that during the first Challenge the Horde event with, we're talking countless, endless waves of smashers or sploders. And that is luckily also something they were touching briefly in their development blog. So let's dig a little bit into that stuff as well. With uh, So for example, with Horde Bash, since it is more action-packed, mm -hmm. is this a thing where when you get up in those higher power levels, it really starts uh, getting getting like getting trying where you really gotta be certain that you gotta be certain of everybody in your squad make sure you guys are all on the same page make sure those forts are yeah prepped. yeah i mean well I'll let, I'll let billy talk a little bit about that talk some of the i mean difficulty like, scale yeah i, I was gonna the... say yes in general because also because this is one of the first things being balanced as like group kind of centric content got it it is actually a step up probably in difficulty from what people may necessarily be expecting that's also goes into a little bit of the feedback we got in the last one too people were like well i wish i wish you had turned it up a little bit right so we're we'll be curious for feedback if maybe we turned it a little too yeah, much let us know let's yeah, see if we turn it out too far <laughs> but we'll, we'll see where it goes um i think the thing that i always enjoyed even from the prototype and is preserved in this version as well is this one will kind of throw variants on the encounters that the normal mode doesn't necessarily stress you at, right? Like, so you absolutely could be playing here and end up with a wave of like, oh, well, now there's five smashers running through my base <laughs> all at once, right? And how do we how do we deal with that? Like, do you try to get them, like, do you just let them wreck part of the base? Like, Right. Is, so. it, is it like a pragmatism thing? It's like, it's fine. They're going to break that part. We'll just let them break that part and we'll get them back for it later. Yeah. There's, there's actually... Um, a great video. We actually should see if we could we could find out. Like QA was telling me when they were testing it, right? They're like, I don't, I don't know. I think we ended up with too many smashers. And it's just like one of the, one of the testers. He's like, he's trying to guard one wall, and he like just turns around, and the other one just blows up in his face, and he gets clubbed like right, right in the mouth, and just instantly dies. I was like, well, yeah, it's it's it's, it's just one of those uh, the hazardous oh. hazardous environment. That was a pro shot there. Oh, yeah. One of the things that Challenge the Horde really had was the option for players to focus a little bit on what they liked the most, especially if they were very casual players. More hardcore players would want to have a little bit of everything, 
But as we saw with the skill tree, you could focus on one area to get more building materials or one area to get more combat materials, which would allow you to play the game pretty much the way you like. Perhaps you would be more of a base builder than an actual combatant. And the developers also touched that a little bit in their stream. You know, some of it's funny too, because like we were, we were joking as you run to somebody's base who like is being attacked for the first time, and you're like, you did, you did what? Like, <laughs> like, like why, did, why did you build your base this way? And then it's like, okay, somebody who's more like building centric is like, okay, quick, we're gonna repair this part. Right, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fix this part. You go over there, you cover this quarter, it'll be fine. What what is this, Billy? Is this what I think it is? Which is just like uh, oh my! You are you getting bombarded? Yeah, you're in a propane yeah. tank. It's uh, pretty awesome. Race. I can say that. Yeah. Uh, if, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, All right. And your metal walls are being corroded as people are touching them. Yeah. Oh, the that, that's even more. You, you, that's even yeah. more fun. Yeah. You you rolled the corrosion. <laughs> oh, the, the true hero eating the eating yep. the propane tank. The true hero. Yeah. Yep. Someone's no. got to take it for the team. Yeah, I was gonna say. So guys, that was like a bit of a brush up on Challenge the Horde. What was it? The like Horde Bash kind of event. Four players with each their own base teaming up together to defend the waves of husks in different status updates. We have different types, different elements, different wave options coming for a huge amount of time. And it's all about helping each other with the very, very limited amount of resources that we have in the game. It's going to be coming. It's supposed to be faster better and improved compared to the last time so not as long as not as crazy waves as what we had before but it's going to be very very interesting with this like walk down memory lane posted i'm going to start looking into how can you prepare in terms of weapons heroes defenders all that stuff for challenge the horde because i'm excited that was what i had to share in this video guys i hope you enjoyed as always thank you very much and very much for watching